All right, guys, how's it going? It's 11th of October, 2019. This is your unofficial Blender news. Let's try and do this in one take. <laughs> Never gonna happen. So I always start with the Blender developing meeting notes. 2.81, tasks and work. Stabilising branch released as of the 10th of October, so that's good to know. The manual still needs attention. And this is one thing I'm going to comment on. It's great having features and tools, but if you don't document them, you're essentially pissing against the wind. So if you can help out with documentation, by all means, please do. There is now a system to display a one-time warning to users with a graphics card. Thank God. Do you know the amount of posts I see? Blender doesn't work with my graphics card, and it's because you're using a computer from 1999, mate. So hopefully that can mitigate some of these problems. Next one up, 2.82 and beyond. Uh, so the developers have been asked to review bigger projects like Mantleflow, which is good because it means somebody's actually paying attention to these projects, and it means that there's actually an influence in the background. So that's good to know. New features and changes, sculpt and paint. Now I mentioned this last week, they're doing major work in the sculpting and painting tools, and that's great to see. File browser's been updated as well, there's a few other changes, so check out the Blender development meeting notes. So the next one up, NVIDIA throws a shitload of money at Blender. Great stuff. It means they can essentially afford two more developers, and that's always a good thing. Now you might have already seen this, 3D Model Haven. Now the guys behind HDR Haven and Texture Haven have essentially been given a grant to make a new website, so keep an eye on this link, 3dmodelhaven.com. So let's take a look at tutorials, and this is a good segue regarding the sculpting tools. And this is from Janum, and it's a pretty in-depth review of the new features regarding sculpting. So check that out. Remember, all links in the description below. Next up, Quixel, using Blender's Eve and Megascans. So if you use Megascans or any of the Quixel tools, good video, good information. Jumping over, B-Girl Blender 2.8 Breakdown and Ramble. Now, Lewis doesn't ramble. I ramble. <laughs> Lewis is very informative, and I highly recommend you check out these videos. It gives you a good insight to how an artist actually works, specifically the workflow that he uses. So he goes from concept art to final render. Great video, highly recommend. Next up, CG Cookie, lighting match. So this is an hour long tutorial, and because it's from CG Cookie, you know it's going to be on point. Next up, Animation Fundamentals, I gave this a kind of brief once over last week, hey. I know it's on Blender Cloud and I know you do need a subscription, but I can't stress enough how much knowing the animation fundamentals is. Next up is Blender 2.8, Beginner Texture Painting Tutorial. And this is a good one to get your feet wet, and it'll kind of cover the basics. So if you've never done texture painting in Blender, highly recommend. Now this necessarily isn't a tutorial, but it's a great video and it's from CG Matter. <laughs> Simulation time, 1 million years, brilliant. So check out the video and check out the plugins that are being used. So let's jump on to add-ons. So I was looking for a Ryzen UV bridge, and I seen one in the Blender market and it was commercial, and then I heard a little kind of talk about it. Then a developer says to me, check out this one. And it's essentially a free version, and it's on GitHub. So if you've never used Ryzen, it's probably one of the best UV tools on the market. So there's a free plugin to bridge between Blender and Ryzen. Now you've probably seen a lot of Moon renders these days, and the reasons for this is CGI Mooncap, and it's by Ernie Wright. This guy goes way back in the light wave days, so it's good to see him around. So you get a pretty damn detailed colour map, and when I say detailed I mean 400 megabytes, 500 megabytes worth. Look at the size of that, it's huge! That's what she said. Displacement map as well, so I expect to see more Moon renders in the next couple of weeks. And the big thing on everybody's lips is Quad Remesher. They now have a Blender plugin, and it looks pretty damn good. i actually seen it in Houdini working, and it does do a good job on the mesh. Just to give you an idea, there's a free trial out at the moment, but Perpetual Pro license is $109. And there's 60, subscription's $16 for 3 months. If it saves you time, it saves you money. And the next one up is Lumiere, and this is on GitHub as well. It kind of reminds me of HDR Pro. You can essentially click on the object and it'll put the light into position. So I played around with it because I was going to make a tutorial. 
and it's a little bit janky in places, but for placing the light, it works great. So check that out, it's Lumia. Next one's from Andreas, it's Exacto Tools, and it's good to see somebody actually working on measurement tools in Blender. Personally, I find that a kind of weak point in Blender. Uh, I like to be exact, so it's good that these tools are coming out. The next one up is Atomic, an intelligent data manager for Blender 3D. Check it out, it looks pretty damn good. And I can't do it justice, you really do need to have a look at the website. And, and it's free, so bonus. Jumping onto Blender Market, sketch style add-on, $22. Might be good if you do ArcViz, maybe a, like you're sketching. <laughs> and let's wrap it up with the fun stuff. Animation of the week. Animation of the week. This is called The Birds Work for the Government, and I believe Blender was used, and I believe Grease Pencil mainly. Now this is a pretty damn sexy animation, plus it's quite thought provoking. So that's my animation of the week. Now it was hard to pick image of the week, so I've got two contenders here. First one up, so I'm not even going to pretend to pronounce the guy's name, it would just be an insult. But I love this render, nice volumetrics, the scene looks complicated, the lighting's perfect. Good render mate, superb. And this is my second choice, and I really like it because of materials more than anything. The only thing I would maybe critic is the pipe here is a bit too clean, especially when you've got the rest of this kind of framework dirty. But other than that, spot on render. And that's been the unofficial news of the week. Do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel, you know what to do. Peace.